Hi, I'm Dr. Nancy Boyd Franklin, and I'm a distinguished professor here at Rutgers University in the Graduate School of Applied and Professional Psychology. And I'd like to talk with you today about my work with African American clients and families. Um, I grew up in a um, low-income housing project in the Bronx, New York, and one of the realities that I noticed growing up is that there were many people who needed help but who did not believe in therapy in the African-American community. Um, uh, they thought it was for sick people or crazy people. And I was determined in my own work as a multicultural scholar to begin addressing those issues in the community, but also to prepare clinicians who were um, of the same race, but also cross-racial work, clinicians who were white or from other ethnic groups, to really be prepared to work with and engage African-American clients and families. Um, because of the experience that so many African-American uh, clients have had in this country with racism and discrimination and oppression, an experience of um, even subtle microaggressions on a daily basis. Um, that issue of trust and mistrust is enormous. And so a good deal of my work has focused on helping clinicians learn how to join and establish trust with ethnic minority clients and families. And one of the most important aspects of that work is really helping people to recognize the cultural strengths. And that's been a part of the work that has been so enjoyable and exciting for me. The first area that is so important for clinicians to understand is that Family is absolutely essential and important to African-American clients. And um, so it's unfortunate that many clinicians are not trained to look beyond the individual and to understand the families of many of these clients. Also, I'm also a family therapist in addition to a clinical psychologist, but many well-trained family therapists or family psychologists also have very little exposure to extended families. And within the African-American community, it's not just mothers and fathers who are raising children. Often in the family, grandparents are involved, aunties, uncles, uh, cousins, older siblings may all be a part of raising a particular client. And so uh, I do a lot of work with children, adolescents, and adults. And I find that often I have to train clinicians to recognize the strengths of these other individuals who are also involved in parenting and child rearing. The other very important strength in working with African-American clients and families is that for many, not all, but for many African-Americans, there is an issue uh, and importance of spirituality. And for some, there's a strong religious orientation. But remember that in the African-American community, there's tremendous diversity. And so you may have a client who is not the least bit religious or spiritual, and you may have a client who is more spiritual, meaning uh, has a strong belief in God or a higher power, but is not the least bit religious. So a lot of my work has been to help clinicians understand the role that black churches, for example, may pay, play in the lives of their clients. Many of our um, uh, families rely on their churches for providing support in raising their children, um, but also in dealing with issues of racism. It is very painful for African-Americans to deal with the oppression and the um, negativity that comes from experiencing racism on a daily basis. And so in our clinical work, one of the things that uh, we need to be aware of is that spirituality or religion can really be a protective factor for many African Americans as they navigate the difficulties that they may encounter. 
Uh, now, a lot of my work has also been with at-risk adolescents. Um, I've just finished a book with Dr. Brenna B Bree called uh, Adolescents at Risk. Um, and we look at the issues facing African-American and other ethnic minority families and also poor families of many different backgrounds. And one of the things we talk about in that book that I've addressed in many of my other books is that uh, for many African-American families, particularly those living in inner city areas, many parents have fears for their children, for their sons and their daughters, but particularly for their sons. And it's interesting because those fears cut across socioeconomic levels. Um, many, as many of you are aware, there has been an increase in uh, recent years in the extent of racial profiling and even police shootings, uh, particularly of African-American men and adolescents, uh, although clearly there have been black women who've been targeted. So as a parent raising uh, black children, one of the biggest issues is the fear not being sure that we can protect our children uh, as they enter out into the world. Um, one of the um, uh, challenges that I find in helping uh, families learn um, how to do this is that many clinicians, um, uh, psychologists, social workers, uh, family therapists, really have had no exposure to working with Afri or living with uh, or within African-American communities. And so it's very important as a part of training that we really expose uh, clinicians in training to these broad issues in the African-American community. The other large issue, and this is a major commitment of those of us here at the Graduate School of Applied and Professional Psychology, is the whole issue of incorporating cultural competency and diversity training as an integral part of our um, curriculum and of our exposure for um, uh, clinicians and training. I think that has been, that whole process of uh, establishing cultural competency and diversity training has been a very large part of my work over the years and an integral part of the work that we do here at the um, ACASAP at the Graduate School.